The holiday of Tu Bishvat is actually a festival. It's a Chag in Judaism. It's not the Jewish Arbor Day. Arbor Day is um, a secular holiday that was introduced uh, in the United States and made a national holiday. And it's a day filled with uh, recognition of trees, um, hugging a tree, uh, having a picnic outside uh, with bands, marching bands, school bands, pageantry, um, speeches, really this sense of just a moment of recognizing trees. I think it's wonderful. I think actually it should be done in every community. It's very much community building. And you can see from the way that it's traditionally practiced, that it is community building, that this is about getting the neighborhoods together in order to recognize the beauty of the trees around them and that you plant a tree traditionally on Arbor Day. Well, you plant a tree traditionally on Tu Bishvat as well, but I think that's about where it ends because Arbor Day is very much a secular holiday and Tu Bishvat is very much a religious holiday. When we look at Tu Bishvat, the idea of Tu Bishvat is our recognition of the new year of the trees just like we have a new year. That God is deciding the fate of the things that grow on earth and who will live and who will die, just as Rosh Hashanah does the same thing for us. These are religious concepts, they're spiritual concepts. This isn't a secular, let's bring the marching band out kind of day. And when we look at Tu Bishvat and we talk about our relationship with trees and the layers and levels of that, because the Torah is a tree of, no of, is a tree of life and because the tree of knowledge in the garden and our relationship with knowledge as well, the roots that we talk about all the time, the harvest, the fruit, our children are talked of in the Torah as our fruit. The relationship that we have with trees is very complex in the Torah. In fact, it goes to the point of saying that when we are at battle with each other, waging war, sieging cities, the Torah tells you're not allowed to cut down and level the trees around the city. You have to leave them alone. And that makes a siege very complex, um, complex because you want to level the territory. You want to cut the supply lines. If you leave the trees up, you're actually creating a challenge for yourself. But the Torah makes it very clear and says, because the trees are not what you're at war with. You can never be at war with the trees. Your relationship with them is too complex. That's what Tu Bishvat is talking about. It's far beyond our concept of Arbor Day. It brings us into an understanding of the, the, the beautiful tapestry of creation, the way that everything harmonizes with everything else, the boundaries that we must impose on ourselves because the Torah is telling us to that we do not wage battle with the, with the trees, that when a tree begins to bloom, we start to count it to be shvat. We count three cycles of to be shvat and we don't touch the fruit of that tree while it's doing that. We back away from it. There are all these things that go on on to be shvat, and they are so beautifully spiritual and symbolic. There are people who have Tubishvat seders, and they begin with white wine and with red wine, and they slowly, for four cups, begin to mix the two together in varying levels of color and taste so that they symbolize the earth and the water entering the earth and the trees growing and mud and the colors and the richness and the smells and the tastes. It's beautiful. Tubishvat very subtly entices you in to take a look at that relationship that we have with nature around us, with the things that grow, the things that give us so much that we don't pay attention to anymore because we just walk into a supermarket and buy what we need. So once a year we sit down and we say to the things that grow, this is the day of your new year. We will celebrate it with you. We'll enjoy it. In fact, we'll bring blessings to it because that's what we can bring to you that you can't do. We will pick up that that you give us, your fruits, your grains, all of the things that you grow that we enjoy. And on this day, we'll gather them and then we'll make blessings on them to celebrate this day. What better way to celebrate the birthday of anything on earth than to bring blessings to it?